find a quiet moment, put some headphones on. Is it just me that thinks this is like the best news in ages? I don't know what happened, but I fell in love. The creators and hosts of Sky's Entertainment Backstage podcast. Are you awake, Stevie? He's like, call me Ben. I don't think you could accuse it of being glamorous. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going to call you Ben Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> I'm joined by the woman of the hour, Jodie oh, Comer. How much fun are you having teasing us all at the moment? You've got to laugh. Let's go! Welcome to Backstage, the film and TV podcast from Sky News and your weekly insight into what goes on behind the scenes as well. This week I'm joined by Stevie Wong and returning uh, a, uh, an <laughs> old friend of the podcast. It's hello. Chris Robertson from the Sky News Arts and Entertainment team. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. W- welcome back. And we have brought you in specially this week because you are an expert <laughs> on one of the things we're going to be talking about. So we're going to be hearing from Tom Hiddleston and Claire Danes. That's not what Chris is an expert on. We're going to be talking about Conversations with Friends, the new Sally Rooney adaptation. That's not what Chris is an expert on. Uh, we're going to be talking about Eurovision. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, ding, ding. Yes. Yes, is, yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is his time to shine. So um, hold on because we will get there. But I actually wanted to start off by returning to talk about the TV BAFTAs. We chatted about these before they happened last week. Then they happened. Um, and it was an interesting one because kind of the biggest story out of the TV BAFTAs was that there's a new Doctor Who, Shooty Gatwa. Um, so that was announced Thrilled. and that sort of then became a brilliant, uh, a big story out of the BAFTAs, which is great. <clears throat> and um, and obviously quite, you know, quite kind of, in a way, quite clever, quite canny to get the entire BAFTAs press line to be interviewing the new Doctor Who. Though I was a bit surprised because normally they do like a reveal where they do like a little, almost like a short trailer, an advert, and then they, mm. the doctor. I remember with Jodie Whittaker because she sort of took off her hood and and there she was. I was ooh. So uh, just, is it a bit short changing to give Shooty the old press line instead? And do you think it was maybe like cobbled together because maybe it was going to leak or something? I bet you that was that was the case. I was curious, like, how did they announce it to the press? Were they like, "That's a new Doctor Who"? Or like, was there? Did everybody no, get a tweet? Like, literally, a press release was it, just press went release. out. So, well, uh, Shooty and Russell T Davies, like, Shooty like put something mysterious on his Instagram, and then Russell T Davies like commented on it. So everyone was like, "Oh my god, is this Doctor Who news?" Yeah. But it was like, maybe he's gonna be, maybe he's gonna be Doctor Who, maybe he's gonna be a companion. Like, it's all quite mysterious. And then like less than an hour later wasn't it Chris like wasn't suddenly like... there was a press a press release from the BBC press office but yeah. bear in mind it's like this was like a Sunday lunchtime so you know like I say most uh, big reveals like this happen sort of prime time uh, yeah. and Sunday lunchtime yeah. is no prime time so and, it did it... make me think oh I wonder if they sort of had to rush this out because I, I do remember, like, prior, maybe before Jody, the, the previous Doctor, they even had, like, a special to reveal mm. the yeah. Doctor. Yeah, and, and, and I remember, like, watching 30 minutes of them talking about everything but who the new guy is, and all of a sudden it's like <laughs> a, a scrim came up and it's like, look, and I was like, oh. But, like, yeah, it, it, it does feel, like, a little bit, like, underwhelming in that sense, but, I mean, yeah. it, maybe, maybe it is true. There probably was, was a potential big leak, you know, somewhere, yeah. and they wanted to, like, jump the gun and, and make sure that, you know, they had the, the story line instead but i don't know it's a but is it also like more people are just going to see it on social media now anyway like who's watching that. who's watching primetime bbc now true sorry well i mean BBC. still loads and loads of people but um yeah i suppose more young people definitely i mean then it should have been a tiktok media. announcement it should have been like oh a yeah. dance that reveals like, some kind <laughs> of, like... <laughs> i love it um, but actually i think um announcement aside i think it's really great casting and i kind of think i really like she to get where i've interviewed him a couple of times for sex education and i think he's really really good fun and actually he's kind of got that slight and I'm, i mean this in like the best possible way but that kind of slight weirdness that we kind of expect mm. from our doctors like <laughs> ever so slightly eccentric maybe is the word i'm not really sure but anyway i think it's really really great casting and i think um, i'm excited to see what he does with the role um well, I, I just i love the fact that you know um even though doctor who is kind of pan sexual in general like we now have a very i mean you know, Chuty's never like announced his preference at all but like he, i'm assuming that he's very queer friendly and because russell t davis is also extremely queer friendly i we're we're heading into a very <laughs> very queer friendly like doctor who and to me that's kind of exciting and and, and i'm just curious to see how they're going to play that because 
yeah i mean we might have like love interests that like you know are different from previous ones and so that that'll be a lot of fun to to, to also check yeah. out and I, I don't know it's very exciting i, I can't I wait think to see it's what a good do. way of getting a new audience as well to mm. doctor who you know like if anything is gonna kind of get people in it's sex education stars right like yes. young that's kind of one of the shows that young people watch and maybe she will kind of attract them over to doctor who so um yeah a, a canny a canny bit of casting there uh, speaking of shows that young people watch, um, apparently It's a Sin was not good enough for the voters of the BAFTA. <laughs> it's a it's a bizarre one. So it had 11 nominations going yeah. in. Uh, and a lot of those were multiple categories. So I think they had like, was it three in the supporting actor yeah, category? Yeah, and an actress as well, I think. Yeah, so they they could never have sort of won 11 prizes. But to come away with, with nothing really was quite a shock. And um, actually, yeah, I thought we could sort of talk about why that might be i've got some ideas have you got any ideas it feels very <clears throat> it's it's it feels a little bit generational to me i'm just kind of curious because i'm looking at who did win and they seem like sure sean bean did well in time you know jody comer did well in hope help and it's these are all like wonderful performances but um it's a sin really was such a like a, a watershed moment for for a certain type of storytelling that like we haven't had in a long time and the fact that everybody kind of like latched onto it from all different generations and the the, the way the stories i mean it's it's a genius show so for those one person that has not seen it please go and 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 but like um it, it's you know, like, like, really, I don't know. I just, I, I just, I think the voters were not the our people. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just gonna put it, I'm gonna put it out there. <laughs> Chris, what do you think? I don't know. Like, we've spent probably the last eighteen months. Is that how long it's been around? Talking mm. about it's a sin. Yeah. And since then, we can't ignore that there has been a lot of other good television, and. Perhaps it was time to talk about some of the other television. But that's time? Been I'm just I don't I don't want to be that person. I mean time was a very good show. But really? Really? Well, <laughs> this, this is what I think uh, basically I think the TV BAFTAs, far, far more than the film BAFTAs, they tend to highlight and, and showcase shows that haven't had the spotlight on them so much. And as you say, we have been talking about... I mean, Steve, you just said, oh, the one person that hasn't seen It's a Sin. It's a Sin doesn't need BAFTAs. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. everyone's already seen it. Everyone already loves it. It's already had a huge impact. Uh, but does, you know, something like Time or Help, are these shows that maybe, you know, people... Some people saw at the time, but maybe there was sort of a bit prestige or, or kind of people, you know, that they didn't get that kind of long tail of promo that where everyone was still talking about It's a Sin sort of a year yeah. later. So I, I do wonder if it's sort of a case of the Academy trying to kind of give a boost to shows that um that that yeah maybe just didn't get as much time to shine i also uh wonder if it's just a case of you know when something's such a front runner everyone assumes everyone else is voting for that's it that's true you know? that is true uh, so everyone thinks oh actually everyone's going to be voting for ollie alexander i'll vote for sean bean because you know i liked him and you know like you know ollie is going to win but and we see that sometimes at the oscars i'm thinking of when like uh, olivia coleman nicked it from glenn close like there's mm -hmm. a sort of assumption sometimes that you know the front runner will get it and so people sort of vote for their pet favorites instead and then they those uh kind of second favorites really start coming through so i think it could be a combination of those things and you know i think it's a shame it's a sin you know, it isn't now recognised as a as a BAFTA winning show in that sense. Mm. But actually, it, like I say, it doesn't need it. It really doesn't need it. It's the winner in our hearts. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, speaking of your heart, Chris, yes. uh, let's 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 get right into this. Listen, I mean, oh. for, as as a uh, your resident Yank, you know, the 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 Eurovision has always been. <laughs> It's always been something that I've, I've mysterious, I've, enigmatic. Well, I, I've always, appre I've always appreciated it from afar because it would always happen during like my Cannes Film Festival, and obviously my roommates were from Europe, and so we would then at nighttime like turn it on, and I at that Across. point would be the first time that I'd actually watch a lot of these, and I'm like, 
what's happening, you know? And and so I never had the buildup until I would say the last two years when we've been, it, it, you know, stuck at home. And all of a sudden, I, like, I was at home and I finally like, start to listen to these songs. And I'm like, wait, I think I like these. Um, and so, so post last year, which I felt was like my most involved appreciation of Eurovision, this is now back to my usual thing, which is like, oh, it's there, but I'm not as like caught up. I, I'm assuming, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Ukraine is the front runner to win. Yeah. But I yeah. but oh, I'm just and, gonna and it's kind of, throw that it. is irrelevant to the song. Like not, yeah, not, not like, bashing on the song? song. I didn't yeah, realize there was a song. Not bashing on the song at all. Yeah. But it, I mean it's clearly uh, you know, uh, there's obvious reasons why Ukraine is uh the front runner and um yeah, it's kind of it's gone through uh to the to the big final and people are people are loving it, of course. Uh but funnily enough, this is the only year I think that I've ever really been into Eurovision that Eng- that the UK actually have a chance of maybe getting un poids. I mean, yeah, one, Chris- just one. <laughs> hey, just hey, one. Hey, <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> Let, let's hear, let's hear, resident fan. Let's hear this. Yeah. Super fan. Let's let's hear your breakdown of the Eurovision this year. <laughs> Look, our act, Sam Ryder, this year is phenomenal. He is our best chance, probably in a decade, maybe longer. He is the songs right, the staging's right. You know, he looks right. That hair, He's a man. TikTok star. Oof. He's yeah. got twelve million followers on TikTok, more than any other act, probably more than them all put together. You know, and. Everything seems to be going in the right direction for him to win. Like, he's in the second half, which is a really big deal, because he's fresh in people's heads. You know, people like Ukraine are at the front, so they maybe get forgotten about. But they're not <laughs> going to get forgotten about because of <clears throat> obvious not. reasons. But, but here's the thing. So Eurovision introduced a new voting system years ago, mm. where the pub- it wasn't just on the public, because as we know... Demo- <laughs> democracy is bad. <laughs> the public can't. No, so... <laughs> well, as we know, it's not that democracy is bad; it's that the public can't be trusted. The public cannot be trusted. <laughs> so they introduced the national juries, which are made up of music experts and record labels mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And the the thought process is that they probably won't rank Ukraine very highly, and they will probably oh. put the UK uh- further up. Oh, okay. I don't know if you look at betting odds and that kind of thing, like a sado like I do. <laughs> But the UK, if it wasn't for Ukraine, they'd be at the top in the betting odds. And usually the betting odds are a pretty good indication of where an act's going to come. So okay. if, it, if if the public vote is more powerful than the jury vote, we're probably going to see Ukraine win. But if the jury vote maybe does, you know, puts the UK higher up and completely ignores Ukraine, we could see a UK win. I, I'm going to so, say so wait, you, right now, UK are not even... I, I'm going to say top no. five. They won't break the top three. Absolutely I mean, not. They're going to break the top two. He's going to break the, the top UK two. The UK are not no. going to break the top two. That is like absolute wishful thinking. I love I, it and I, I am here for it. I also get caught up in like, you know, like the World Cup every few years. Like, oh, England <laughs> could win. Like, it's not happening, guys. No, it's, it's coming home. Joke. It's coming home. <laughs> it's uh, this is, it is very, it is very uh, patriotic of you to like think that Sam Ryder's got a chance, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to... No. I'm, as, as an outsider, I'm just going to say, maybe not. <laughs> like, no, it's going to be Manchester 2023. Here we come. I adore... Um, I, I think Sam's great, and I think the song is actually decent, but I am going to tell you right now, it's we, we Top well, five. I think top five is, is feasible. Let's start talking about some TV then, and we're going to start with The Essex Serpent, which is out on May the 13th on Apple TV+. Plus. I've done some research. Into a mythical beast. Not mythical, real. The serpent is an invention. A symptom of the times we live in. So you're against progress? I'd rather believe in a creature people have actually seen than an invisible god. Is that blasphemy? We won't get my husband to judge you, no matter how hard you try. (laughs) So this is a very highly anticipated drama. It's based on uh, a best-selling novel, uh, which was also an award-winning novel. um, And it stars the kind of very kind of intriguing combo, I think, of Claire Danes and Tom Hiddleston. They're our lead characters. She plays a widow who moves from London to Essex to investigate after the reports of a mythical serpent there oh i should say this is set in the 19th century so um moving to essex to investigate mythical serpents is less weird then seemingly (laughs) um and and tom hiddleston plays the local pastor uh, a man of faith and uh, she's all about science but they form a a bond um 
and you know romance ensues um uh, and it's directed interestingly by Clio Barnard who we spoke about recently um because she directed Ali and Ava Yes, Ali and Ava. Well done. Yeah, which we loved. We head, loved. Which we absolutely yeah. loved. And she kind of is known for kind of using like very um, uh, kind of British aesthetics, which we don't necessarily see elsewhere on screen. So Ali and Ava was set in Bradford and she's done other um, bits in Yorkshire. And then this is largely set in Essex on those really eerie um, kind of flats where they were used in Lyre as well. I don't really know how to explain them, but they're like rivulets of water that have kind yeah, of carved it, out the land. I and mean, it's really strange and misty it, and kind of In a weird, weird way, it does look like a snake. If you look at yeah. the, if you if it's like an aerial view, like the, the water kind of just weaves in and out and, and it just, it, it already has a kind of menacing like shape yeah. already. Add, add the, the, the fog of, of the air, of the region. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, therefore we already have a very nice setting. It's very muddy. It's yeah. very like it's very wet. Um, Stevie, like, like, Stevie's face, you can't see it, but I can tell you right now. He's like, Ugh, I would not I would, go I, there. I would never, it's well, too dirty. This, okay, but, again, feel free to laugh at. But when I first read, it was Essex Serpent, and then I was like, Well, my only reference to Essex is really the only way it no. is. And GC. So, so. I, this is it. This is that rebranding Essex, isn't it? Because most people, I'm not kidding. I'm like, like, where's the, all the, the trashy people? Like, yeah, the reputation that Essex has. Is this one of like yeah yeah where's all, where's all the like yeah Towie like where's all the like fake boobs and the like you know all the crazy oh. hair and just like the, the drama I mean this is a different kind of drama but this is putting else. rural Essex on the map this is not your uh, yeah. your kind of salons and cafes and um, you know created uh, reality <laughs> yeah this, that, this, this ain't your yeah this ain't your TV Essex that's a different yeah. it's, um I mean this is. It's it's a very beautiful looking show, even though it's yeah. muddy and foggy and wet, and <laughs> uh, um, and there's a lot of sheep uh, stuck in mud, and you're just kind of like it. It, but the setup is an interesting one, and I and I kind of uh, did a bit of a nerd uh, moment and kind of like went into like why did why did the writer want it to go to this place? So back in the uh, uh, back in the olden days, oh my gosh, I wish I had a year to like give you. Um, Essex was a place where they had a witch hunt situation where um, women were were like kind of um said to be like like witches and so they actually murdered a bunch of women over there and so to place this storyline within that area mm-hmm. also adds another level of maybe what's to come i don't know i mean like i've only seen the first episode you know but like uh there's a bit of foreboding of like you know even having a claire danes a city woman come into this to this yeah. town a right stranger. when yeah a stranger right when a young girl is is you know proclaimed missing um sets up a lot of not probably not great things <laughs> for for all the characters involved here so it's a really interesting back background to like kind of set this 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 series up and i it's slow but i'm curious enough to because i love clio uh, bernard also i'm curious enough to like see how this plays out because you know we've got top acting here like no one is you know there's no there's no dead weight yeah. in, in, in this cast but um it's a slow one i, I don't know I, like what did you guys think of, of the pacing and, and how this kind of is for the screen <laughs> yeah I also thought it was quite slow. Um, I was watching the first episode and I was like, is this going to pick up? Like, No. <laughs> and, and no you are hey, correct. No. That's the answer. They said no. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, we don't really... You, you sort of, I watched the second episode and we kind of get the the whole like, oh, has this woman brought evil into the village yeah, kind of yeah. vibe. Um, and she, she is very much the outsider and everyone's staring at her across the church and everyone is... She goes into a school and kids start chanting. It's all very mm. odd, and um, but it does look beautiful. Yeah, and you know, I think most people would quite like to see Tom Hiddleston wrestling a wrestling a goat out of a mud flat. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, oh that was a goat. Oh my him. god, this is obviously no, I, I know nothing about sheep. animals. I think it was a sheep. I mean, <laughs> sorry, not okay with farm animals. Oh, exposing oh, there you ourselves go. as the city dwellers we are. Um, <laughs> I literally live in the country. I think, um, yeah. <laughs> I think um, I think that's it. It's very beautiful, and uh, clearly Claire Danes and Tom Hiddleston can act. There's you know there's some as you say there's no dead weight at all, but it is slow, and that is possibly going to put some people off. I think we're used to our dramas rattling along at more of a pace um, these days, uh, and I also wonder if if the kind of 
the the mythical of it all might kind of be slightly off-putting as well, you know, because we sort of hinted at that this visually, we right at the very start, you sort of think, oh, you can see that there's this serpent, but then it sort of becomes like an allegory and a metaphor for everything mm. that's going. On. It's quite heavy, basically, is what I'm saying. It's quite <laughs> heavy. It's kind of some. It's tackling some big themes. It's you know, faith versus science, belief, um, all that kind of thing. So that it's it's. Yeah, it's a, it's a thinker. It's prestige drama, isn't it? It's it's not the easiest watch, I would say, although it is very beautiful. I spoke to Tom and Claire, um, and they were both lovely, as you'd expect. And uh, it was interesting because Claire said it was actually the the character, which is sort of why she wanted to be involved in the first place. Well, it's just not very often that you find a, a, a female protagonist who's this surprising and um and dynamic and um you know kind of full of wonderful contradiction uh but i just loved her uh her spirit her curiosity her uh hunger for adventure and life um you know and i i i happen to have read the book which i adored um but i i thought it was you know kind of kind of deceptively radical and subversive um and quite feminist really it's interesting that she says that because um obviously claire danes probably gets a bazillion scripts a day come her way so the fact that she's sort of saying oh it's not often that you get um a a character kind of like this i I just thought that was a a kind of yeah a little insight into probably a lot of the uh the stuff that is still being offered in terms of female roles um and with tom i was asking him because obviously he plays a pastor um a a man of faith but then this pastor he's also quite open to new ideas it's like kind of the time that it was it's sort of the world was sort of changing um and i asked him if it got him thinking about his own kind of belief system and well here's what he said certainly it does yes Uh, um you know, I find I find the central question in the story, which is, um, where do we derive meaning from in our lives? How do we make sense of our lives um, in the space between birth and death? And we want, we need it to mean something, and so we we turn to faith, to natural sciences, to to reason, to try to understand where we fit in. We, we still, we live in an extra, on an extraordinary planet, in an extraordinary universe, and, um, and we all still ask those big questions. You know, when I did watch this, I was like, does this show need to be six episodes? It did feel like a movie to me. Mm. Like, what if this was like a two hour film and then we could have like had a beginning, middle, end and called it a day and gone to a festival and seen it like there. And um, is this, is this, because it's slow paced, can somebody watch six hours of this and kind of get what they would rather than uh, in a two hour film? I'm just curious because it was, I was the whole time I'm like, do I want to invest like another five yeah. more hours into the series? Um, I would have watched this as a film, you know, and and, yeah. and and maybe this was developed as a film back in the day. But like, I mean, the fact that it is this long, longer like format um i don't know if if this yeah. if this was short what did you guys i, I mean, mean it's, it's, it's apple tv plus isn't it so we'll, we'll never kind of get those ratings like yeah in, in a way you want to but i yeah i do wonder if um if this will sort of be a big hit for them or not um or perhaps it'll just be one that just sits in their back catalog and people discover i would say that the book was very very popular so there is mm. that kind of ip audience if you like built yeah. in uh, people that are going to be quite keen to see this. And, you know, Claire Danes and Tom Hiddleston are big stars with big followings. And Tom is interesting, you know, obviously he's known for Loki, but he's not afraid to take on kind of yeah. roles that are so, so different to that or perhaps not the most popular thing around. So. Well, and also... He's a Shakespeare if, actor, isn't he? He, yeah. he is. He's a classically uh, trained actor. Also, if if the let's say the blue hairs are not going to go to watch movies in the cinema, maybe mm. the Essex Serpent is a very good kind of opportunity for them to sit at home and like kind of. I hate mm. to say the blue hairs because I'm one of them these days, but like it just feels <laughs> like I, I too am a blue hair. Um, but like, but yeah, it's, it, like it, it is something that they would then have more time to to, to sit back and, and 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 enjoy. So maybe we'll see. We'll see how this plays out. Uh, but Essex Serpent is showing on May 13th on Apple TV Plus. Oh. 
Moving on to a very buzzy new show then. Let's talk about Conversations with Friends from May the 15th on BBC and on Hulu. I have this impulse to be available to you all the time. I don't want to hurt your marriage. My marriage has survived several affairs already. I've just never been party to them. I kissed Melissa. We've been flirting when it just happened. Who knows what happens between two people when they're alone? This is the latest Sally Rooney adaptation. Uh, Do I need to say the words normal people to you? Obviously, normal people was an absolute mega hit. Uh, uh, Came out during lockdown, made like overnight stars of Paul Mescal and Daisy Edgar Jones, who were arguably on the way to becoming stars no matter what, but this certainly propelled them. Um, This is not in any way a sequel or a follow-up. It's a completely separate book, but it's, again... The book is by Sally Rooney and they've brought back director Lenny Abrahamson and co-writer Alice Birch. So, you know, you very much got the sort of same team working on it. And it's again set in uh, Dublin and it's about students. So, yes, they are completely separate, but you you can see why people are excited for this that love normal people because it feels like, you know, the next thing or the more of the sort of same. Uh, this time... It all focuses on our lead characters, Francis and Bobby. They are best mates. Um, They're both girls. uh, And they kind of make friends with this couple, this older couple, played by uh, Jemima Kirk from Girls and Fabulous Jemima Kirk. I mean, incredible. The the casting of that is perfect. I read this book and when I heard about Jemima Kirk's casting, I was delighted because I just think she's perfect. And then Nick, uh, her husband, the character's called Nick, and he is played by Joe Alwyn, who's better known to many as Mr. Taylor Swift. Um, And uh, these kind of students get kind of, uh, basically forge strange relationships with this couple and there's lots of um, kind of uh clandestine stuff going on um and you know it's another sally rooney so it looks at relationships and uh unusual relationships and and how that that happens and how the the rest of your life is affected and which of the relationships that are important in your life and all that kind of thing um i but i can't help but compare it to normal people am i doing it a big disservice here because i like am i being really harsh by doing this is it is it unfair to compare it just because it happens to be by the same team uh i don't know what do you think would you like to hear a secret yes yeah I watch normal people okay this is really interesting then so you are not comparing it okay good you're okay, coming in let's fresh start this with is you good then. this is so really you, good yeah. you enjoyed it you you feel yeah. like uh it, yeah you, you believe the chemistry you're into the story yeah i mean i knew nothing about it going in and i kind of saw what was going to happen a mile off um, you know, random two friends meet random couple and they start making eyes over the house. I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> no spoilers, but it's about infidelity. Um, <laughs> you know, and I just thought it was it was quite good. And it was quite pacey as well, I thought. Mm. You know, they meet, then they're swimming in the sea, and then they're at parties or they're at shows. You know, yeah. it's like, let's go, let's go. Yeah. And it they're, again, they're little yeah. half-hour episodes. Yeah, like normal again. people. They, they've like been normal, placed yeah. in, in 30 minutes. There's a lot of episodes here. There's 12 episodes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so this is a lot, it's a lot longer than, than normal people is or was. Um, it's also in the same universe as normal people. And, of course, our lead, um, Francis, played by this newcomer, Alison Oliver. I went yeah. on her IMDb. She did nothing. This is yeah, new. Yeah, she's like, a exactly newcomer. And thing. she was first to be yeah. cast... She was first to be cast as well, so she was cast, and then they wow. basically built the cast around her, which wow. is so cool, isn't it? Like, apparently, Joe Alwyn was cast very quickly after, so I think they'd sort of, you know, they do sort of chemistry reads and things like that. Right. But uh, Lenny Abrahamson, the director, is sort of known for, yeah, kind of like making, you know, making sure the chemistry really is perfect. Between Imagine having chemistry with Taylor Swift's boyfriend. You would be I mean, terrified. you would be constantly, yeah. Uh, A song but... is coming. <laughs> 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 Um, but but Alison Oliver, by the way, amazing. I, yeah, I, she's very I was good. So, I was so good. like captivated by her performance. Mm. It, it's it's also very similar to the character in in that in, in normal people, meaning that she's a she's a young girl who feels a lot, and she mm-hmm. and she might not be able to um, 
to kind of talk about it, but yeah. she finds ways to express herself, whether it's through her, because these are four artists who also are kind of, you know, using their art and, and, mm-hmm. and their the way they, they think it kind of like in, in, in like in seeps into the way they, they deal with each other in the, in, in the real world. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a quiet, introspective girl who's kind of being forced to do things maybe a little bit outside of her box. And, and that therein lies the kind of uh, like, like a uh, through way for us, the audience to kind of like enjoy to see how this plays out. It's, it's slow moving though. Again, we've got another one where where it really takes its. I know the pacing is fast, but I think in terms of like how this train is going, it's still a pretty slow train, and you're yeah. just like, well, okay. Um, and, yeah, and, 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 and I and, think what Stevie and I sort of gently tiptoeing around saying is that having seen normal people, this yeah. is slightly disappointing. Oh, it's, I feel bad. I don't want to say that, but that is I how think, I felt genuinely I think, watching it. I was disappointed. I think you're a little bit more disappointed than I am. It's like I'm I'm okay with watching a uh, a young girl flower and and kind of like see <laughs> see how this is going to play out because that's my jam and and so I but it doesn't have. If you're expecting to see a normal people, um, you're not going to get it. This is a very mm-hmm. different approach. It is, but it's a, it's, it's not bad. It's just, it's just, diff- it's slower. I, I think that's kind of what it is. And, and um, uh, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. We have to, we keep on comparing. I mean, we literally, we're just talking about normal people and that's not a good thing when yeah. it should be about the new show. We are not like it. Conversations with friends, May the 15th on the BBC and Hulu. Moving on to everything, everywhere, all at once. This is in cinemas in the UK from the 13th of May. What's happening? Evelyn, I'm not your husband. I'm another version of one from another universe. I'm here because we need your help. Very busy today. I'm so tired to help you. Across the multiverse, I've seen thousands of Evelyn's. You can access all their memories, their emotions, even their skills. There's a great evil spreading throughout the many verses. And you may be your only chance of stopping it. Don't make me fight you. I am really good. I don't believe you. And finally, should I say, finally in cinemas in the UK, because of course this has already become a a huge word of mouth success in the US. Stevie, you first talked about this film a couple of months ago now. Oh my gosh, it was in March. It it, it was the opening film at South by Southwest, Mm -hmm. um, showed there and was a huge, I mean, everybody that walked out of that screening was like, that's the bad thing about it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, And it actually does, it's an interesting, because like afterwards, I've been trying really hard not to read any reviews for this. Mm -hmm. So, So actually, I haven't, I mean, the full disclosure i've yet to see this because it hasn't shown where i am right now and, and i plan fully plan on watching this so don't go too crazy with spoilers but but it, <laughs> no spoilers uh, this yeah. is a spoiler no, free zone don't thank worry. you um but i do you know it stars michelle yo as this aging chinese immigrant and, and and she kind of goes on this insane adventure and 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 to kind of throw in the word multiverse is kind mm-hmm. of probably you know saying it lightly but somehow she is entering into this crazy world where um it it's a lot of sci-fi. It's a lot of kung fu. It's a lot of metaphysical. But actually, in all of that, there's so much heart in the center, and that is kind of the beauty of of where everybody, when they fa- if they fall in love with this movie, that's kind of what they they've yeah. they've left with. It's a really positive like like piece, and 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 you know, it's by the Daniels, who I adore. I mean, they yeah. they did this crazy movie called Swiss Army Man about Which had a, Daniel Radcliffe in it as a corpse. It's just just so funny. Who, Daniel who, Radcliffe is just who farted the best. a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and, uh, and so that was that movie. And even then, when you describe it, you're like, well, this sounds bonkers. But then when you finish watching that film, you're like, what a sweet mm-hmm. movie. And so, so again, the Daniels have done it again. And, and this is now really, like, putting them in this, like, new echelon of, like, filmmakers that, yeah. that are super exciting. And I just think, like, after this movie, they can sign any, they can do any movie that they want now. I want to ask you, Chris, as someone, because obviously I'm, like, heavily steeped in the film world and so I was like well aware of what was going on with this movie but until you saw this on this list had you heard about this film yes okay because um, <laughs> I'm not sorry. sure how much it sort of got into public consciousness because it is to all you know intents and purposes a, a fairly small film yeah and I think the reason I heard of it is because it's coming out at the same time as Doctor Strange 2 mm-hmm. and people are making lots of 
comparison. comparisons against them because Doctor Strange is a multiverse film from yeah. the, probably the biggest film studio in the film studio in the world at the moment, and this is a multiverse film from you know it's like from not indi- it's like it's like yeah, a not, it's, it's a, not a big film studio yeah so that's where I sort of saw all the comparisons, but I also see everybody on social media just raving about how incredible this film is yeah yeah you know, that's it that is it it's 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 kind of become this word of mouth hit and it's fascinating and the fact it's come out at the same time as dr strange is of course just a huge coincidence but it, it you cannot help but draw parallels and this movie everything everywhere all at once it came out first and it got people going to cinemas it yeah. got bums on seats which is no mean feat at the moment uh it's not every film that's managing it um it's tending to be the blockbusters that are managing it and um and then of course doctor strange comes out and also has a, a brilliant uh, opening weekend in the u.s certainly um and and then you know by comparison you look at the numbers of this small film and go well you know doctor strange has done so much better but if you kind of extrapolate it out through the budget it's like well yes because that has a huge marketing yeah. budget and a huge advertising budget and a you know just a huge budget in the first place uh everything everywhere all at once didn't and yet just by kind of sheer word of mouth critical acclaim it kind of managed to have an impact at cinemas um which is yeah like a pretty impressive thing these days it's an interesting thing because they you know in the states there's a lot of talk whenever you do box office there's always like the percentage of droppage like Mm -hmm. like the following week and stuff and this movie had one weekend where like from the previous weekend it had zero drop and in fact it like it like it's so rare because by then it was week like four or five and and they had already like expanded to more theaters and i mean this is this is a very um it's a, it's a film that can, which I think is also like a really exciting thing if you want if you want to support independent cinema because, you know, as we move forward, it, you know, it looks like the only movies that are able to get people to go back to the cinema, at least the pundits are saying, are these big like blockbuster films. So to have something like this show mm-hmm. up and kind of prove everybody wrong is a real beautiful storyline in itself, and I think that that is something that we should support. Plus, it's Michelle Yeoh who is yeah. just like perfect in every single way, and it's the return of Ki Hoi Khan, who like obviously if you were a child and watched any of your Raiders of the Lost Ark, I mean like and Goonies, this is the man that was like that kid. Yeah. And so he's back and he's he plays the husband and it's just a real celebration of, of I don't know, Jamie Lee Curtis is in here. So there's just really yeah. cool people like involved uh, all, all around. I absolutely loved this film. Uh, I think, you know, I really hope people go to cinemas here to see it in the UK. It's clearly a cinema film. And actually, I caught up with the Daniels. And I mean, what a wild time they're having because they could never have anticipated. I'm sure the film kind of get the reaction they did. And uh, I kind of I put it to them, you know, this absolutely proves that people are up for going to cinemas. And well, here's what they said. There are a lot of obstacles on the way to the theater for everyday people. It costs too much. There's, you know, lots of there's so many different things that just don't make sense anymore and this film is was unconsciously and consciously a way for us to adapt to what like behaviors of of consumers and of movie watchers like this is a movie that like you cannot have uh, if you have a short attention span it doesn't matter this movie's gonna be whatever Mm -hmm. if you want to just have a good time this movie's for you if you want to just feel things and just feel catharsis this movie has something for you um, and because again, if you want to like yeah. uh, go with friends, leave the theater and talk for a few hours at the bar, like this is for you. You know, like it, in a lot of ways, it is a love letter to all the reasons we like going to theaters. And like fight scenes are an obvious thing that people like in a theater. But like, I love feeling uncomfortable in a theater. I I love like hearing people around me get uncomfortable. I love seeing other people cry while there's tears in my eyes, you know, and like I and I also love the movie Jackass and I love screaming oh no no at the screen and and we we tried to sneak you know all that in and 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 to watch it pay off is so rewarding, you yeah. know, and and I think I in some ways forgot that that was part of the goal. You know, like you you get tunnel vision, mm-hmm. and so like once we premiered the movie, I was like, "What is happening?" Like yeah. people are shouting at the screen, and, and I was like, "Oh, right, 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 that was the plan." I am very excited of the potential that this film might do well in the awards season, and that yeah. that would that would really. 
that would make my day period you know like that is kind mm-hmm. of like like uh, of course we love all the prestige movies and stuff but for something like this which is an independent film uh you know starring a predominantly asian cast i mean like that is which, something that's and super it's exciting silly. And it's, i mean and this it's movie silly. is silly at times in the in the most wonderful way but it is silly and actually for, yeah to break through into award season would be cool because it's oh. not your kind of prestige this film. this is not the last we're going to be talking about this movie i fully hope that we will continue to talk all the way through the end of award season next year so um, everything all at once is showing in cinemas in the uk from the 13th of may right let's whip through these last couple then uh love struck high prime video on may the 18th uh so this is lindsay lohan basically this is why i'm in in for this show because lindsay lohan <laughs> does the voiceover um and it's where it's a reality show and it's where uk teens try to find love at a u.s high school it's like a fake u.s high school obviously not on it a real one uh, and i've described this as like a cross between love island and sex education because you know sex education's in that like uh in that really bizarre school which looks yeah. like a u.s school but is apparently like a local english um, kind of like school in the country or something and like, our schools don't look like that um so uh there's 15 kind of singles looking to find a partner but they also have to like go to class and go to cheerleading and baseball and stuff chris looks absolutely irritated already so i'm guessing you weren't loving this somehow do you know what who is this show for <laughs> uh, claire apparently <laughs> i was watching it and it's people that are like 25 and over or whatever, right, go into this fake US school in Devon, by the way, because I looked where it was, and I was like, oh, it must be in like, this looks really nice. Yeah, it's in Devon. <laughs> and like, they're just like 30 year olds saying, like, oh, yeah. But they're you're... not 30, they're like in their early 20s. <laughs> no, there's like one guy who's 30. I looked at them, I went, I, oh my I, looked, God. I had to deep dive this because I was just so nice. intense. And they were like, oh, yeah, do you want to go out to the prom with me or whatever? And I was just like, this is like, Come on, who is this for? Like, is it, is it not like Love Island Light? Is this not for the Love Island audience? It shouldn't be. Like, and also, like, Lindsay Lohan, <laughs> what a random choice to do a narration. Well, no, because I, I Lindsay think... Lohan's best known for Mean Girls, which is set in yeah. high school. Yeah, and also, so... don't, aren't you just thrilled that Lindsay Lohan's back in our lives? I mean, I am delighted about that. Uh, well, I mean, if she's not there in person doing a dance in front of a DJ booth, like, no, I'm not, not interested sadly. in this show, because that is, <laughs> that is all I want no. in life. <laughs> um, I will I will admit, it is trash. Uh, and it is, <laughs> it, it's not, it's not, you know, it, it is... Yeah, exactly what you'd expect from a show like this. But if you need something to fill that Love Island gap, this is absolutely fine. And it has um, gay couples as well as straight ones, which is yes. something that Love Island gets a lot of heat for. And actually, they've managed to do it with seemingly... It, they've made it look very, very easy to kind of not just be a straight kind of cast in this. So... Um, yeah, uh, it, if you want something to fill that Love Island hole, I think this is the one. Basically. This is it. Well, this is another interesting like thing because you know I just read a really interesting article about like oh, I'm talking about an article. This is how blue hair I am, by the way. And so like uh, uh, they were talking about how like Netflix is now not really in the business of making prestige television anymore or kind of content because, because they're Love obviously is blind is so good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so so there there's a lot they're greenlighting a lot of reality shows because mm-hmm. that seems to be drawing everybody in. So the fact that Prime Video is now entering into this world of like mm. trashy reality means that this is not just one person's trend it's like everybody's now looking at their numbers and they're like all right what can we do for like the least amount of money bring very attractive people on for like you know 10 episodes well, that's of it. Like... these shows are cheap to make and people watch yeah. them and people get you know it's it's that thing where people fall in love with other people's storylines and they want to know you know will this couple make it will they get even, through and even in a fake american high school it... even as 30 year olds asking a girl to the prom you know like kind Stevie, of thing like a guy this... called Hussein there who i just and look i'm sorry Huss, if you are you gonna this. introduce me to him what's going on like, oh what are you <laughs> he, he, he literally like these women walk in and he basically just starts like yeah saying how much wants to have sex with them and i'm like my guy like you're on tv <laughs> I mean, yeah, but you know, you've, so you've got to have a villain. You got to have a villain. You got to have a villain. Uh-huh. Um, okay, well, Love Struck High then is on Prime Video from May the eighteenth. Uh, finally, then we'll briefly talk about Life and Beth. This is on Disney Plus from May the eighteenth, and is Stevie's pick because apparently it's one of your favourite shows, Stevie of the year. Yeah. So, far. Uh, so 
So Life and Beth is is a new show by Amy Schumer um, that she wrote and kind of produced and I and think she directed and directed and stuff. And stuff. It. Oh, um, oh, oh. So it's a it's a very like kind of personal uh, piece about uh, uh, I would say like a, she's not middle aged she's like whatever that age is late twenties early thirties um, she it's 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 a it starts off with her kind of in this relationship selling wine she doesn't like it it's not a great life and then um, she ends up going to this place in Long Island very close to her home her where she grew up and a lot of her previous things comes back to light and then she meets and falls for this like guy um called john who's kind of on the spectrum uh, uh played by michael Sarah, who's i mean who knew that michael Sarah could be a romantic like, <laughs> in this i mean um, do you know <laughs> uh, exactly and 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 so the, it, everything unfolds it's a it's surprisingly a soft series which i think is kind of um it's it's a really uh, it it doesn't have a lot of like big ideas, but at the same time, it's a really like sweet piece. And and you know, uh, Amy kind of brings in a lot of her own uh, personal issues when she kind of grew up and, and is is kind of dealing with it in this series. I don't know. It just came to me at a very very nice time. At the same time, there's another show on HBO and also uh, probably on on Sky called Somebody Somewhere, which is also in a very same vein of like women kind of going back to their home discovering themselves in this kind of slow fashion and i don't know this this really resonated i i really appreciated life and beth and and it's not like ha ha funny but it's not well it, it's yeah, not, it does not, have moments of being oh, kind yeah. of ha ha funny it's like it's observational comedy and it looks yeah. at you know her like her relationships with her family and her you know people she works with and it, i agree it's not like it's kind of dark humor at times yeah. but it's also very recognizable kind of the way you kind of she's often like uh manipulating her own behavior to kind of fit in with whoever she's talking to yeah. and uh there's like there's a very good joke where she's trying to sell some wine to people and this woman's like i just think like champagne is for like celebrating and she's like oh yeah like i'd never thought of that i suppose <laughs> I, can't, I can't make it funny but it is but there are moments that are uh that are very I mean, funny it's yeah, amy schumer i think you have to she... like amy schumer that's the thing isn't it oh, you know, not an i'm amy an amy schumer, schumer cynic ah, oh so yeah. what, what when you watch this what do you think um i think it's okay yeah but i think we've seen a lot of american sitcoms that have love interests and something happening it just feels like it's a formula that a yeah. lot of american sitcoms that end up over here follow and yeah like i like i probably won't pick it up sorry um although the bit at the end was quite the bit at the end of the first episode was quite funny that made me giggle <laughs> Um, when well, she finds out some news, then just like starts yelling at karaoke. <laughs> that did make me giggle. Um, it's not that funny, as in like the situation isn't funny, but it was funny. On but screen. that's it. It's that dark humor. It's, yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable. That, like, like, yeah, thing. exactly. I'm, and to be very honest, Chris, it's like I would, I probably would agree with you that like maybe the the pilot really isn't indicative of how this plays out. This this actually has so much more heart than you think, and and that is why it, it was a surprise for me. I had I had no idea what the show is about. So when I press play, I'm like, well, I like her enough to like watch it, and then and I'm like, oh, I'll check out the second episode. And then by the, by, I would say like three or four, I was like, okay, I'm in. This is a show that I like, and then I needed to find out how this played out by the end. And so so. I, I would I would hope that maybe you would give it a chance, but again, we have so much content that like if you just don't have the time, you're just not gonna have the time for this one. But you know, if you want something like a little bit lighter, a little bit softer with a bit of heart, I would say Life and Beth and even Somebody Somewhere, which we never talked about, but it, those two shows are such good indications of like how good TV feels like when people are just spreading niceness. I don't know how to describe yeah. it, and and yeah. everything's so dark these days that like yeah, like you kind nice of to need get away from that yeah, sometimes yeah. to just leave something. Well, that's why we loved Heartstopper, isn't it? Because we love feeling Heart like Stopper. full of joy. Yeah. Full of joy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Something for everyone this week, for sure. Um, next week, we're going to talk about the long-awaited Top Gun sequel, uh, and we'll hear from all the stars, and we'll chat about the new TV adaptation of The Time Traveler's Wife. Ah, tissues at the ready. Nice. Um, in the meantime, please email backstage at sky.uk. We do love emails. Chris, thank you so much for Yay. coming back and joining us. You're very welcome. Again. Come back yeah. again. <laughs> We'll drag you back again at some point. Uh, and we will speak again next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.